Okay, so there are, there are pretty much three basic syntaxes. Let's get a new query going uh, for your insert statement. So let's just write these in. Uh, so there's three basic syntaxes for the insert statement. There's insert with values. This is when you're going to use this when you specifically provide the values for the rows. Okay. And this can insert 0 or n rows. This is a change from previous versions of SQL Server. It used to be like in SQL 2007.0, you can only insert one row at a time, zero or one. Now I say you can insert zero rows because if you had a constraint violation, you'd say zero, right? So I guess you're not technically inserting zero rows. So let's just say insert one or more rows. Okay? But now we can actually, instead of having to repeat ourselves with the column list, we could just, we can do as many as we want. I'll show you how that works. Insert with select. Okay. And this is the results of the select statement are stored or inserted. And so again, can insert one or more rows. Um, and then insert exec the result set from a stored procedure is inserted. Okay. And the same as before, can insert one or more rows. I should have just put that at the end and said all of them have that <laughs> same thing. Hey, so why don't we do that? <laughs> Just make it simpler here and say all can insert more than one row. So let's just take a look. I'll walk you through the basics of each one of these. Now first thing that you need to understand is the column list is optional. If you leave it out Columns are inserted in their ordinal position. And what I mean by that is when you look at the columns, this is the simplest way to figure it out. We could query sys.columns, uh, but when we look at it right here, this is column 1, this is column 2, this is column 3. So if you don't specify these column names, column list is optional. I could say, and let me pick a smaller table here, uh, password hint for example. Insert password hint. Notice I'm leaving it out. I'm not putting a column list in here. Now I can say values and so this right here, so what would we do here? Um, car, that's probably a more, what is your favorite car and we put in today's date of January 5th 2011 and if I want to separate if I wanted to just do one I could do that okay. or I can do multiples with the values statement like this so um, so we had car what would we have wagon I got a two-year-old and a six-year-old. We have uh, two wagons here. Uh, what is your favorite wagon? Radio Flyer, at least here in the U.S. Uh, and I can do another one just by putting in a comma right here. Um, speak. What are your favorite speakers? I'm going to close that out just so we have enough room to type. I get the aid. I'm just being lazy to type that, but you notice that I'm able to just continue uh, somewhat like an array, if you will. I'm passing in a an array right here to the values statement. Um, wood. <laughs> I don't know. What is your favorite wood? <laughs> um, 
there you go and so that would be the values statement so this adds a single row and this adds three rows see the old way you'd have to copy and paste your insert but the the key point how we got discussing this is this column list is optional so when I get into a case like this this value there are three rows or three columns this value goes into column one this value goes into column two this value goes into column three if there's a fourth column that allows nulls or has a default it will either get a default or the null value whichever it would have now if I did something else let's try this uh, let's, I'm just gonna copy and paste for brevity here so now I'm going to only insert two things here so I'm going to say the hint ID would be um, computer uh, Apple or PC I, I don't know and then I'm gonna leave it alone so notice that I'm only providing two columns of value here's what SQL Server is going to do when it parses this it's going to parse successfully when it binds it it's going to look and see that there are three columns in the actual table and so when I come over here and come back over here and try to execute this the column name does not match the table definition okay, so I could do this however I've got to come over here and say I want these to just go in the hint ID and the display text columns and I can put these out of order if I wanted to right I could say uh, I want it to do this and now I just need to flip these two around okay. so now this value will be placed into the display text this value will get put in the hint ID and will this actually work no because we have a non null column here that has no default if we had a default value for this that said you know get the current date and time or get the current date it would work but we don't right? so we'd have to actually specify a value for that okay so that's your insert with values it's pretty standard fairly easy this is going to save you a fairly large amount of time if you want to work with a table that's fairly large what I always do and I say large meaning number of columns the amount of typing I gotta do I just go over here I right click on the table and I tell it to script the table as an insert and it will it will script it all out for you and so it adds all of this little bit right here uh, you can flip flop and fly with whatever you want to uh, you see these little guys are parameters so you can come up here and you can click the little parameter uh, button which one the AB right here so it's gonna read email address in bar cartoon and so it allows you to just start typing and see it's gonna replace these so this is just a glorified find and replace so email address Scott at AOL.com next first name Scott uh, last name Wiggum uh, one zero uh, blah 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 right and just watch see it just replaces what you've typed in right there right? so pretty handy uh, so just again right click uh, and script that as an insert now I'm almost always doing that when it comes time to to generate one of the column lists for an insert statement uh, let's do the other one here the insert with select this one's fairly easy as well uh, so insert with select uh, step one build a select statement and verify the results so I don't really have anything uh, so we'll have to just make something a as identifier um, who is your favorite football player we could say footballer for you Brits uh, and then uh, as question and get date as the date and so now I've gotten too much 
and we could do a union like ideally you would select from some tables but I don't really have any tables right now so here's B um, what is your favorite ice cream flavor and then get date right, union we may as well put a union all for performance and um, what do you like on a hamburger? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyhow, so we've got a result set. So step one, build a select statement. Verify that the result sets are what you want. And then step two, wrap an insert around it. So now we could just say insert password hint hint ID uh, display text what was it the date date added and then I just copy and paste my select statement so what it's going to do is it's going to when it comes time to process this step one it's going to run the select statement load that into memory and then step two load that memory into that table so here there you go. It just added three rows to the table. So insert with select. Just make it a two-step process. Get the select statement working first. Make sure that that's what you want and then insert it. We're going to talk about transactions a little bit later in Chapter 7 as a way to kind of back out of things in case you get into trouble. Um, the last one would be insert with exec. We have not really gotten into stored procedures, so I'm going to keep this very basic. So step one, write a stored procedure that returns a result set. So create proc my test sprock. We used to call them sprocks back in the 90s. I don't really hear anybody doing that anymore. Uh, as uh, select D as column one. Um, what is your favorite database? Uh, as C2 and today's date as C3. We'll say go. So there now use it exec my test sprock again if you don't know the syntax of stored procedures and the logic of them just kind of hang tight we're going to do that I think that it's chapters 9 and 10 uh, that we really get into those but you can see every time I run this stored procedure this is what it returns I've hard coded a result set of it, right so now step two just wrap an insert around it So insert password hint, hint ID, display text, date added, exec my test sprock. And run it. And that's it. Now I can't run it again because it's going to try to put that same one in. Because every time you run that, it's returning the exact same row. There's no auto-incrementing value or changing of questions or this is just really more about logic and syntax rather than making something amazing to blow your mind. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'll tell you what, let's stop here. Uh, I've got some other things that we really do need to cover here. Uh, I want to come back and talk to you first about identity columns and how you can, uh, how they work when you insert them, what happens if you uh, have a constraint error, how we can insert specific values. So I'll see you in the next video.